Hi. Now for the last two parts to this question, it's based on finding the inverse function of f of x and then we've got to sketch the two curves, one with equation y equals f of x and the other y equals f to the minus 1 of x. So if you haven't had a go at this question already, why not just pause the video, have a go now and uh, come back when we're ready and check your answers against my work solution. Okay, well let's just see how you got on, if you did give this a go. We've got the function f then, it's defined by f of x is such that it maps onto e to the x plus 2, where x is any real number. And in part d then, we've got to find the inverse function of f, stating its domain. Well, to do something like this, let's just copy out the question first of all. I'm going to change this though to the notation f of x equals e to the power x plus 2. So to do something like this, what we generally do, okay, is wherever you see f of x, just say let x equal that. And then wherever you see x is in your equation over here, there might be more than one, uh, you replace it with a y. But there's only one x in this example, so it's just e to the y plus 2. And what we now have to do is rearrange this to make y the subject. So we would first of all take 2 from both sides. So x minus 2 would equal e to the power y. I'm going to change that round though as e to the y equals x minus 2. Now to work towards getting this y, because it's a power, we would take logs to both sides. Natural logs in fact. So that would be the natural log of e to the power y equals the natural log of x minus 2. Next we use the power rule for logs. When you've got a power up here, we can bring it to the front of the log. So we get y times the natural log of e, which equals the natural log of x minus 2. And you should be familiar with the fact that the natural log of e is 1. So that leaves us with therefore y equals the natural log of x minus 2. So we've now made y the subject. And when we reach that stage, all we've got to do is just replace the y with the inverse function. So you could write that therefore the inverse function of x equals the natural log of x minus 2. Now you could change this okay, into this style. If you did, you'd have something like this. Therefore the inverse function is such that x maps onto the natural log of x minus 2. We're also asked to state its domain. Well, you can't take the natural log of any negative number. So x minus 2 has to be greater than 0. And that would mean that x has to be greater than 2. So the domain is x is greater than 2. So I'll just write here where x is greater than 2. And there you have it, part d to this question then. Now for the last part of this question, we're told that on the same axis sketch the curves with equation y equals f of x and y equals f to the minus 1 of x, in other words the inverse function of x giving the coordinates of all points where the curves cross the axes. Now to do this, let's start by sketching the graph y equals f of x. We'll put our axes on, don't forget to label them. Okay. Now for f of x, it's e to the x plus 2. We should be familiar with what the graph of e to the x looks like. Let's just sketch it on here. e to the x is a graph looking something like this. It never touches the x-axis, gradually rises, goes through the y-axis at 1 here, and then goes up fairly steeply like that. 
This point here is at 1. Now if we add 2, the graph rises, translates up by 2 units. And so we're going to get something like this. If we push that upwards, say 2 units, it's going to look like that. OK, so this is the graph then of y equals f of x. I'd like to put on some other detail onto this. There's an asymptote here now, an asymptote at y equals 2 because we push the graph up by 2 units. So this line here is the line y equals 2. And this point here where the curve crosses the y-axis is when x is 0. When x is 0 you've got e to the 0 which is 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, So this point here is 3. So that's y equals f of x with all the detail on. Now when it comes to sketching the inverse function of x, one of the easiest ways of doing this is just to remember that when you compare these two graphs, in any situation they're always mirror images, a reflection in the line y equals x. So if I was to draw the line y equals x through here, it's a line that's going to pass through the origin then at 45 degrees, something like that. Okay, That's the line y equals x. Now if we're to mirror this curve in the line y equals x, what is, what's it going to look like? Well first of all there's going to be this asymptote here, y equals 2 is going to be mirrored in this line. and it's going to look something like this. We'll do it in black as a dotted line. It's going to be an asymptote that's going to pass through this point here. So it's going to look something like this. Okay. And its equation will this time be x equals 2. So I'll put that in as x equals 2. And this point where y was 3, that gets mirrored across onto the x-axis and it will be 3 here. OK, so that point is 3. So all we need to do now is just mirror the curve. We can see it's going to come up from here through the 3 and then carry on something like that. OK, so it's only a sketch, it's not quite accurate, OK, but uh, hopefully it gives you an idea. This blue curve then is y equals the inverse function of x. OK, well, there you go. Hope that's given you some idea then on how to sketch these graphs and how we find an inverse function.